I, uh, my name is uh, <clears throat> Abu Bakr Ali, um, and I'm uh, presenting a, a complication, um, interesting one. So I'm not a bariatric surgeon, but I love managing uh, uh, bariatric complications. Um, so uh, this is a 38-year-old uh, female. She's uh, 5'7", uh, weighs 367, and her BMI is 60.9. She underwent the bypass that was complicated with a leak, diagnosed on upper GI post-op day number one. She was uh, taken to the OR uh, for a diagnostic laparoscopy with drain placement and uh, placement of a J-tube uh, distal to the uh, JJ anastomosis. Over the next uh, 3.5 weeks, the um, uh, patient was uh, septic. She was initially on uh, uh, very high pressure. She developed renal failure and CRT. Uh, drain output eventually decreased and uh, amylase from the drain uh, was uh, low. So repeat CT uh, scan um, uh, showed that she had a contained a fluid collection next to the GJ anastomosis, um, uh, which was not capturing the fluid, and uh, which explains why the drain output was low. IR were consulted, but the patient was too big for a CT-guided uh, procedure. The uh, patient uh, eventually uh, was weaned off of a uh, like down impressor. She was only on 0.2 of a uh, levo, uh, but she had this intermittent fever and uh, this persistent uh, white blood, elevated white blood cell count, and she was also on uh, very high pressure of a uh, CPAP, um, uh, uh, which, was, which she was on uh, preoperatively. So, um, uh, I was then consulted for uh, endoscopic uh, intervention. I spoke with the patient, told her she, that she would have to be agreeable for a uh, trach uh, to pre uh, proceed with uh, any uh, um, intervention, uh, especially if uh, I would go down uh, with the endovac therapy. And the plan was to kind of uh, either place a double pigtail uh, catheters, one or multiple, and or a placement of a stent or endovac therapy, uh, really depending on the endoscopic uh, finding. Uh, this is her uh, CAT scan. Again, she can fit in the CAT scan, but it, it was difficult for IR to uh, uh, perform the procedure while she was in the CAT scan. You can see this is a CT esophagram, and you can see the contrast going there, but there's some, uh, uh, you know, there's a connection there to this fluid collection here. At this point, the drain was removed because it was not doing anything and leading to this fluid collection, this really big fluid collection, so almost like a figure eight fluid collection. So I took her to the uh, um, operating room. She uh, uh, had a, a, a trach place, and um, I'm using this as a guide to kind of show where I am during the endoscopic portion of the procedure. So here I'm coming down the esophagus. I initially thought that there was a leak in the uh, GJ junction, so I kind of missed this coming in, this portion here. This is the esophagus. I'll come back to it and find it later. So I'm going down, and this is a really slowed down to kind of show what uh, was missed. So I'm coming down here at this portion. I'm in the distal esophagus, starting to enter the uh, con uh, the uh, uh, um, the uh, the uh, conduit. Here I'm at the conduit. Her ana her GJ anastomosis was a hands on uh, anastomosis. I'm taking my time uh, like during this portion of the procedure because initially I thought it was a GJ uh, leak. 
I did perform esophagram, which kind of led me uh, uh, to come back uh, to the esophagus. But here, I'm in the uh, small bowel. I'm through the anastomosis down to the small bowel here. That's a root limb. Coming back. Very slowly. You can see like this purulent fluid on the uh, endo uh, endoscopy. That's a suture that was used to create the GJ anastomosis. Again, we're at like four weeks post-op now. That's a GJ anastomosis. Here I'm back in the uh, uh, gastric conduit, pulling back into the esophagus, and edit it out as I performed an esophagram or an uh, uh, upper GI uh, uh, study uh, injecting contrast through the endoscopy. So here you can see I'm back in the esophagus, about two centimeter proximal to the G uh, to the uh, 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 G junction on the left wall. You can see a defect there. right there. And that's on the left wall of the esophagus. I get in the uh, defect, and this was a result of a bougie injury, actually. Um, uh, the surgeon usually performs these GJ over a bougie, and here I'm in this cavity now, in the abdominal cavity, contained cavity. And that staple line that you're seeing is a staple line from the uh, reservoir, uh, the, uh, sorry, the gastric remnant. So I'm kind of suctioning, suctioning getting everything out. I usually also edit it out. I usually use a, 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 an endoscopic uh, cap and use it for debridement to kind of like just rub. And I use brushes to kind of rub. And this is what the result looked after. I kind of rubbed everything that I can clean out. At this point, I decided to kind of do a endo sponge. So I measure this cavity here and it measures about uh, seven centimeter. So I decided to do a endo sponge. And again, you can see the wall edges of, uh, of the esophageal injury is, is pretty cl clean. So I, uh, I, fa I usually fashion the sponge uh, smaller uh, than the cavity itself, a little bit smaller than the cavity itself. If I remember correctly, this was about probably five centimeter. And uh, initially I used like an 18 French uh, uh, NG tube. And um, there's like an error knot here, as this guy uh, described by uh, um, uh, uh, Stephen from uh, Baylor. I kind of advance it through the uh, defect, and then I use a tripod to kind of shove it in. This is how the endovac looked at uh, uh, the second endovac change. We usually wait initially about five days for the vac to kind of work really well, and never wait beyond five days because it becomes very, very sticky here. I'm very, very excited that everything got resolved. Or everything got fixed. So I'm suctioning. I'm very, very happy. And then I start seeing this green stuff. My resident asked me what that is. And I'm like, that's probably just dirty water. You know how sometimes you give an answer and you don't believe the answer yourself? So here I'm sucking, sucking more and sucking more. I'm like, hey, dirty water is cleaned. Everything looks good. Then I start sucking and, you know, they're... There's all the bile coming out. And this is endovac change number two, which is five days after the first one. So I kind of follow where the bile is coming from, and I eventually kind of get into the remnant stomach. That's a remnant stomach here. So the scope kind of went from the distal esophagus over here to the cavity and the uh, contained cavity into the stomach here, remnant stomach. At this point, it's a small opening. I initially decide that, hey, I'm gonna clip this. I bring the clip, the clip isn't the right size. I'm gonna put a, 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 a what do you call it? I'm gonna, uh, I decided that I was gonna use a Ovisco 
clip, but then it kind of like, you know, uh, 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 came to me that, you know, this is God gift to me, you know, like uh, it was on the most dependent area of the uh, contained cavity. So whatever fluid is accumulating there now can kind of go down there. So I aborted the clipping or using an Avesco. I just kind of left it open and continued with my endovac therapy. And this is endovac number five. I'm here coming back from the stomach for, uh, and back there. And you can see how, ve how it's very, very clean right there. I can't even pass my scope there. This is endovac therapy number five. And down here is the uh, uh, gastric uh, opening. So the gastric opening, uh, the, gastric muco uh, the gastric remnant mucosa is not in, in direct contact with the uh, mucosa of the esophagus. It's in the contact with the cavity. And then the cavity is uh, connected to the, uh, what do you call it, to the uh, esophagus. So this is open to a cavity and then to the esophagus. So it's not direct mucosa to mucosa. So at this point, I kind of put my uh, 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 my cap here. I'm trying to kind of clip it. I, I already placed my first clip over there, kind of deciding to close it, knowing that's not really going to work. It's like closing skin over infected tissue. But it just kind of made me kind of like probably kind of feel a little bit better. So I kind of sucked the edges together and kind of put my first clip over there. You know, you want to make a big hole to a smaller hole and a smaller hole hopefully kind of disappears down the road. So I kind of suck those uh, edges there and put my first clip. I already placed my first clip right there. Here I'm deploying my second clip. You know, just kind of make a bigger hole a little bit to a smaller hole. That was the uh, kind of the idea. Now it starts bleeding a little bit. I'm like, huh, oh, it's just kind of better to just leave it at this point here. Another option probably would have been in, uh, probably in Ovesco, but this was, the angle would have been a little bit kind of difficult to kind of place. So, um,
she was actually discharged to rehab after the fifth uh, endoscopic uh, 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 endovac treatment of nice chips and J2 feeding. Her white, white blood cell count throughout the course of the five endovacs uh, became uh, uh, normal. Uh, she eventually uh, came off of a CRT. She was on hemodialysis. Uh, trach was downsized and eventually removed. And she was started on bariatric right three weeks after completion of therapy. There is no science behind that. It's just kind of what kind of made me feel better. Um, so this is her uh, sofa. Uh, this is a, a upper GI uh, study that was uh, performed. Um, that was uh, performed uh, two months after. And you can see the sophogram. It looks really nice. Nothing kind of leaking out. And I was very very excited that you know there was a complete healing. However, in the delayed images, you can see some contrast in the uh, gastric uh, uh, in the gastric uh, remnant. Most of the contrast goes down the uh, rue. So, I mean, the radiology said maybe it's about ten percent. And again, the fistula is between stomach cavity, then the esophagus, it's not direct contact. So she lost over a hundred pounds since, um, uh, since this all happened and she's on regular diet. She's uh, actually urinating herself. She's off completely off of dialysis. Uh, I performed the scope three months uh, later which showed a very small, even a smaller esophageal opening with, uh, with a uh, persistent gastric uh, leak. And you see it only in the delayed images um, to the uh, gastric uh, remnant. 